everyone's firing on all cylinders, ready to go for the Constellation Cup series. Talk to us about your selection process as there have been a few changes this time around. Yeah, um, well we've had camps uh, leading into the final selections. Probably really the process started uh, last year at the end of um, the England series, mm -hmm. pretty much. Once we finish one series, then we start to work towards the following series. And so um, whether people coming into camp and performing out in trainings or uh, whether we're monitoring players when they're back into their home environment. Um, I think uh, with the Constellation Cup, we're sort of in a delicate space at the moment because they, the players do wear two hats in regards to the international duties with the Silver Ferns, but also that balance of working with the clubs as well. So uh, really happy that we've got agreements from and support from the ANZ coaches that uh, the players are following one plan. Um, and we've been working closely with the um, clubs to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So been a different build up, I think, for this Constellation Cup, but it's uh, within the context of what's required at this time. There's a few changes, of course, as, as mentioned, and it's a bit looking a bit, one thing that stood out to me was the defenders, the mm. three that you've named, whereas traditionally there are you know, probably a few more. So what mm. was your decision behind that? Yeah, look, we're a bit short in that defence end, mainly through um, injuries with Michaela or pregnancies, uh, babies um, with both Phoenix and also um, Katrina. So that puts us three down already as a starting point, but also there's a couple that uh, weren't up for selections because of uh, not meeting fitness standards as well. So. Um, even though we're a bit short in that defence end, I'm happy with the personnel that we do have. Um, I think Karen, uh, Jane and also Sulu actually uh, deserve their uh, uh, selections and we're very lucky where they're very versatile and they can play a few positions. So um, I'm happy where they're currently sitting uh, by the work that they've done behind the scenes to get themselves ready and prepared. Uh, if any injury happens during that time, then we'll just manage it as we do. Um, but at the moment, the three is what we have. So um, I have in the past, in past series, uh, actually taken less players in our shooting end as well. So this is just that uh, different context, but sort of the same reasoning. One thing that looks really exciting that jumps off the page is the amount of talent that you've got in the middle. Mm. So talk to that. Oh look, I think that's the amazing thing is that we've got a lot of mid-quarters um, in New Zealand and in the Silver Ferns and they all have a uh, point of difference and uniqueness in how they play. They're extremely fit, they're hardworking, they're tenacious and um, fortunately or unfortunately, it's really hard to, to um, select somebody over somebody else um, and it's be just getting to that stage where we're looking for um, a different type of game style. So with uh, being less numbers in our defence end, it also gives opportunity to work with more numbers in our midcourt and hopefully look to um, up that level of intensity and speed through the individuals that we have in the midcourt unit. So that's probably one of the most exciting areas I feel. Um, definitely we've got a great engine. I uh, can't wait to see what each individual looks like when they do take the court. A player that jumped out at me in that middle, Maddie Gordon, uh, coming through for the first time, mm. obviously plays for the Central Pulse and had such a stellar um, premiership. What was mm. it for you, that why she stood out for you? Yeah, I think Maddie, uh, we all identified uh, Maddie as a future Silver Fern and noting that when she did make the Silver Fern squad earlier up that there probably was the expectation or 
um, thinking that she was going to be into the silver or be selected for the silver fern. Um, I think uh, over a short space of time, maybe three to six months, we've been able to um, experience her level of maturity and understanding what's required to be a silver fern and to wear the fern. And I think that has grown over a short space of time. So coming out of January camp and also our touch point camp a couple of weeks ago. Um, really happy with the progression that she's made, her level of awareness and I think her overall exuberance uh, is probably what's shining through. So um, a good way for us to test that is actually get her or provide the opportunity which she has by the selection. Um, now she would have to compete for a starting position like everybody else and to be named in the 12 and I think that that's exciting for our uh, Silver Fern squad that there's going to be competition and you have to work really hard in the training uh, area um, to be finally selected. So looking forward to seeing what she can do in the training sessions and the lead up towards the first test. And finally looking at the shooters, Bailey Mez um, has you know been in the media quite a bit about mm. coming back from her injury and things like that. What is it about Bailey Mez that impresses you the most? Oh, I'm really happy with what Bailey's been able to do post-surgery and her overall fitness levels. I think it's been amazing to some respect. You know, she hasn't been able to run, but she's hammered herself in the gym and also on the bike, which meant um, her fitness levels are through the roof. So she's worked really hard on that. Uh, physically, she's still a beast, as everybody knows. But I think prior to her latest injury, I was just starting to see her consolidation of her brand, the Bailey Mears brand, and being really confident with that. Um, it was just a shame that she got injured and has been off the scene or out of the scene for the last year. Um, from a silver fern perspective, we're taking the cautious approach with her. The good thing is we know that she's available to uh, take the tests. Yeah. So that's a bonus and we'll work with her every day to make sure that we can manage her load in the training environment. So um, just taking a precautionary approach, but I can't wait to see her out on court. Yeah, and looking at Australia, obviously a very different looking squad, but players that you would be accustomed with working over in Australia for the years that you did. So mm. what are your thoughts on their squad? Oh, look, I'm really excited. Probably a person that I like to mention is Cara um, Coynan, who uh, was with Lightning when I first uh, was there, or there for the three years, and uh, we picked her up as a youngster just coming out of school from Northern Territory. So she's one of those kids who I would say from Magnetic Island, who's a country girl, um, and for her now to represent the country and for her to come out of Lightning is pretty cool to have been part of her journey. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what she does and her step up. But um, all the diamonds like we know are battlers. Um, and even though they haven't been on court since the end of 2019, expectation is they are number one and they will perform like that. So all those individuals that I've seen in SSN and who are now starting to pave their way like we are and building the depth, um, that we will see what they can do out on court and I think that's really exciting for both countries to just put the best out there, um, so I can't wait. Finally, a bit of a left field one this one, uh, I did a, play, uh, a podcast with Lightning Mike Ango from the CKB City Kickboxing Gym who mm. mentioned that he, Eugene and Israel uh, had, had a talk in the Silver Ferns camp um, about how they go about things in terms of coaching and leadership and things mm. like that. Um, so what was the idea behind that and what do you think you got out of those types of conversations? Yeah, um, as has been mentioned, one of the words or values that we want to incorporate into our program is around the word dominant and add that to pure. And what does that actually mean? And for us even to be saying those words has taken us out of the realm of how we usually talk and also really lifting the bar of what we see, the silver ferns, but also I suppose to some degree that pressure that could also be added to that word of dominance. Mm -hmm. But that's where we see ourselves, that's the epitome of our sport and to really be number one in 
in Commonwealth or the worlds is what we're driving towards. And I think when we look at MMA, um, Israel, uh, Eugene and Mike and the work that they've done in their space, um, and it's, they've, they've produced um, world-class athletes, not only through Israel, but there's quite a few of them, and now they're getting Junior Far ready for his boxing. So um, the takeaways around that was the word dominant, what does it mean for them? I think also the appreciation of how far they've come within the short frame or the short time frame, but also the skin that they have as individuals and um, the hard work, obviously, which I think is a 101, but um, how they all come together to help an individual um, and bringing all the different uh, expertise as well together. So uh, it was just learning from the best um, and um, how we can pick some of those strands up, bring them into the silver fern environment. But also I think the biggest thing is us changing our mindset, you know, and taking that front foot and not being afraid of that and not being scared of not being able to perform or compete at the level that we want. Um, so I think that's a massive shift for us and you know that's where we're heading and that's what we want to be able to put out on court is that pure dominance. Kapai, well, all the best for the Constellation Cup Awesome, thanks. Bye.